Yeah. How was that playing to their audience or like what percentage of it did you feel like was your audience very small percentage <laughs> i would say yeah i don't even i couldn't even put a number on it but i mean i did see heads out there like i saw some heads that like they knew who we were mm. but like majority nah majority was like that you know because they were mainstream you know they were oh, they yeah. were on some other you know they were mainstream band and 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 uh had MTV hits and all that. So, you know, they're drawing in that crowd. You don't need to have any awareness of underground music or hardcore at all to be super familiar with Limp Bizkit, exactly. which basically like opens up their possible crowd to the normiest of normies. Yep, yep, exactly. So, and that's, you know, they got everything from like, you know, grimier people to like a bunch of squares. They had, a, you know, they had a big demographic of people. But one thing I will say is they were very open minded towards us. Mm. And that was cool. I love that was cool. concert demographics. Yeah. Like, I love looking out into the crowd and just being able to get a vibe for who this audience is. And you have to kind of stereotype because obviously no matter what, it's going to be yeah. mixed demographically. But, like, you know, I, I remember I interviewed this rapper, JPEG Mafia, who's sort of like an underground, like, hipster type rapper for lack of a better term. And he was playing at, like, Pitchfork Festival. And I'm just looking out at the crowd and it's just like all of the sort of like white elitist looking like music critic r nerd kids. Oof. And I'm kind of just like, dude, I have never been to a show where that was the crowd. Like I've never been around this exact demographic. I'm right. pretty sure. Right. You know, whereas yeah. like then I went to a, a reunion show with like Snoop and the game and everybody uh, like one of these old school 90s rap West Coast rap tours. Nice. Sounds fun. Oh, it was great. And I'm looking out at the crowd. And there's so many like normal dads, 40 years old, holding a beer, standing there, rocking out the Snoop Dogg, just having a good time. And I'm like, this is like the most passive aggressive fucking normie <laughs> grown ass rap fan who listens to the radio crowd I've ever been around. Like I, I actually really love witnessing the different crowds that get oh, brought man. in. You know, It's entertaining, man. People watching. It's, 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 it's fun. But for you, okay, you're so deep in your career and I always say that like if you want to be a rapper or whatever, you're going to have to get past this era in your career where you're performing and basically getting no response from the crowd and then, you know, best case scenario, you get really popular and all of a sudden you're performing to a crowd that knows everything Every single word mm. and then you can kind of like afford to not be the best front man in the world because the audience is kind of doing it for you but what is it like for you to be this late into your career and still go on tour and perform in front of audiences that realistically don't know what the fuck you're doing <laughs> it's 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 you know like i'll use that limb biscuit as an example it's actually was refreshing because you know it sort of gives you like you're you're trying to you know, we've been around forever, but these people don't know us. Mm. So, like, it gives us that energy to, like, kind of, like, let me show you what we're about as a band, as a culture, the whole thing. You know, I'm trying to squeeze in all that into, like, a 45-minute set. You know, right. I'm trying to, like, represent us, represent the movement, the scene, you know, everything I came from, everything we're trying to do. It was, like, you know, it's... It, it's uh. It's fun, man. It was cool. I, 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 I almost prefer that nowadays sometimes, like to, to be challenged in that way to play to like newer crowds. But what about like even a, if it, even if sometimes it doesn't pan out, right? But sometimes a lot of you know. It, but compare that does. emotionally to like you play a show in New York, packed fucking venue. The literally like eighty percent of the crowd knows all the words to your songs, and they're in your face, and they won't oh. get off stage. Like what? What's that feel like emotionally? That's that's you know that's. That's the best. Yeah. You know, and New York and other cities too around the world, you know, and a lot of cities in Europe because Europe's really um, hardcore, you know, really, really uh, potent in, the, in, in Europe. They you know care. What I'm saying? Yeah, they care, man. They care mm -hmm. a lot about every, every aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing like playing your own city or playing just a show that has that vibe where it's just like explosive right mm -hmm. when you go on. Yeah. Nothing beats that. But uh, as a person who deals mostly with rap now, I always feel like that's the thing that rap fans don't get is like how intense a live performance can be because I've been to hardcore shows where it's like a fucking war breaking out as it starts. And it's just like the coolest thing in the world, even if you've never heard this band before. Yeah, no, I, I it, it's unique in that way. You know, I think nowadays, like, I guess moshing and slamming like that's starting to like 
be accessible to the mainstream for whatever mm. reason through whoever you know it, it's it's been happening for some years now you know with like Lollapalooza you know like all these different you start seeing that but people you know that's from our world yeah like that stuff is from our world you know I mean I didn't invent moshing but like that aggressive like just you know way of dancing and way of expressing yourself like that comes from us right you know, not, not us mad ball but hardcore and it's crazy to see that in the mainstream sometimes now and i'm like these people don't even know where that came from right you know what i mean they're like stage diving to like some pop band yeah, you know yeah. what i mean it's like so rappers weird. and shit they got crazy stage diving going been, sometimes yeah, that yeah they don't the fans just go for it yeah. although i will say that I've seen certain artists play at like festivals or, or at festivals in different parts of the country where some of the crowds have a lot of moshing and some have almost none. Right. And it feels like it's almost like a cultural thing. Or I remember one time we, we did a show that was Blueface, uh, who's a rapper from out here, and fuck, I forget who the other rapper was, but it was a very mixed crowd. So you kind of have like 35 year old grown ass black women with their hair done in the same crowd as people who are moshing. Oh boy. And it's like, it's make it makes like these women are like terrified, like have n right. no reference point for why this is happening anywhere near <laughs> them. Yes, and it was crazy to see that culture shock. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, that's that. I mean, that that's the special. Like you were saying before, man, that's a special thing I feel like about our scene is just that kind of that transfer of energy. Like when the music hits, and like it's just like an explosion. Like you said, like like a. Like a fight almost like you know yeah i mean i i hate when it turns that way when it goes to the you know when it gets stupid mm. and it turns into an actual fight but when it's just like that control chaos or whatever you want to call it like it's 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 there's nothing like it really man you can't you know and i love all music but you can't really duplicate that in any other genre or or, or culture or scene you know i mean it's, there's never going to be anything more intense than like life or death and at hardcore shows, it basically feels like that. Like if you if you are not on point, yeah. then something very bad could happen to you here. Yeah, man, absolutely. All right, people, we just hit 300,000 subscribers. You know we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. Appreciate y'all.